Number 27. Find the ratio of the diameter of aluminum to copper wire if they have the same resistance per unit length as they might in household wiring. All right. So, um, right, it almost it seems like they, they didn't give us a lot of information. So sometimes this seems a lot a uh, little complicated. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to kind of uh, think through how to solve the problem, obviously, right? I mean, what the heck are we doing here? Not thinking through how to solve the problem, right? Um, so I'm sure that helped you out a lot. Um, anyway, uh, what I want to do, what I really want to focus in on is that they said that they have the same resistance per unit length. Now, what that basically means is that the ratio between the resistance R to per unit length over L is going to be the same for each now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the resistance of the aluminum wire and the resistance of the copper wire is the same, or the lengths are the same. It means the ratios are the same. So, for example, the resistance of the aluminum, let's just say, could be 20, and the length, and the length could be 2. Whereas in copper, it could be 10, the resistance, and 1. Right? The ratio between those two is going to be the same. The ratio here is 10, the ratio here is 10. Right? So... It doesn't matter what numbers we choose, basically. We can choose whatever numbers we like, as long as they have the same ratios. All right? So that's the first critical kind of idea here, is that the uh, ratios between the length, excuse me, between the uh, resistance and the length are going to be equal. All right? So I'm just going to leave these numbers in. I mean, you could change them, though, if you wanted this to be 20 over 2. It doesn't matter. You can definitely do that. All right? But now, what will be different about the two wires. Well, the ratio, like I said, between the resistance and the length is not. But what will be different is going to be the resistivity. What's the resistivity of aluminum? Now, we're going to assume it doesn't say it's at 20 degrees, so we got to assume it's at 20 degrees. All the values here in the table are at 20 degrees Celsius. So, aluminum has a resistivity of about 2.65 times 10 to the minus 8. Okay? So let's also look it up for copper. Here's copper's value, 1.72 times 10 to the minus 8. And then both of those are ohmmeter, so we're just going to leave that alone, okay? Now the area. We do not know anything about the area, right? So this is just going to be, I'm going to write this in as pi r squared. And I'm going to write this in as pi r squared, okay? But I know now, right, if we look, if we're thinking about this, there's really only one thing that we kind of don't know about this. is going to be the radius, right? The relationship between the radius of the aluminum wire and the radius of the copper wire. So that's really what I'm after, right? That's really the hidden thing that I'm trying to find. And we might then be able to make the logical leap between knowing the radius and then finding the ratios of the diameters. Hmm, right? So... What I'm going to do here is let's start with the basic formula, okay, that we're going to need. Now, if you notice everything that's on the page, right, the formula that's going to relate all these variables together will be the resistance will equal the uh, resistivity multiplied by the length of the wire all divided by then the cross-sectional area. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this for both, okay? So watch. So let me just move this on down a little bit. You'll see how I'm going to work this in. One second. So let's move that down. I'm going to write that one in black. This represents the aluminum. And this one here will represent the copper in blue. Same formula. Now, how do I get from these two things then down to these? Well, all I'm going to do is basically cross multiply the lengths on over to the left hand side of each of the equations. So watch. All I'm going to do, literally, just take this, move it on over there. Simply then write a little division sign, clean it up a little bit, delete that, erase this, put a little division line in there. Just manipulate it a little bit to make it look beautiful. And here. Okay? Now I'm going to do the same thing for the copper. Good. Put it there. Write a little line underneath. Great. Let's clean up the... Uh, right hand side a little bit. Let's get rid of the little dot. And that's that. 
Okay, now we have, these are two separate equations, okay? But what do we know about the ratio, the rela meaning the relationship now between these two equations? What do we know about the ratio of the resistance per unit length of the aluminum to the resistance per unit length of the copper? Well, they're the same. That's what we wrote down before, right? So this is just logic now. This is just logic. If this equals this and this equals that. And I know that this equals this, then I can say that these two are equal to one another, right? So all I'm really doing now is I'm substituting that on into this formula. So what, instead of writing the resistance per unit length for the aluminum, I'm going to now write the resistivity per unit area for the aluminum. And that will equal then the resistivity per unit area, uh, not per, yeah, well, I guess per unit area, because it's a division, but divided by the uh, cross-sectional area for copper. So, what do we now know here? Well, we simply now know, and we can start plugging in the values if we want. I mean, we can also do, yeah, why don't we do this a little more formulaically, actually. So, let's expand on the areas now down there, okay? Meaning, in, you know, we're going to think in terms of formulas, so this is just the resistivity divided by, what's the formula for cross-sectional area? We're assuming it's a circular cross-section, so it's simply just pi r squared. So this is going to be the resistivity of the copper divided by pi r squared. Now, we have to find the ratio of the diameter, okay, of aluminum to that of copper. What that basically means is that we need to know the diameter of the aluminum, which is in black, divided by the diameter of the copper, okay? Now, if we notice, couldn't I, if I, if I knew the ratio of the radii, right, the radius of aluminum to the radius of then the copper, could I say that their ratios are the same as then, meaning the radii ratios and the diameter ratios? I don't even know if I'm using the word radii in the right context, but eh, who cares? It's physics, not English, right? Um, what do you think? Well, if you're not sure, right, create a little, create a little diagram for yourself. Pretend you got two circles, big one and a small one, and that's a square. Big one and a small one. Okay. Let's pretend this diameter here is going to make it up. Uh, be it. Um, let's make a. Let's make the number simple. So we'll say it's ten. Okay. And let's say this one is. Uh, I don't know four. Okay. Yeah, let's make it two. Two. Be even easier. Okay? And I wanted to find the, the ratio of the diameter of the black one to that of the uh, blue one. What would this be? Well, this would simply be the 10, the diameter of the black one, divided by the diameter of the blue one. And what's that ratio? It simply work, works out to be five, right? Five to one. Now, let me ask this question. What is the ratio? What is the radius now of the black circle? Well, if its diameter was ten, half of that then would have to be five, right? So the radius here is going to be five. What about now for the blue one? If the diameter is two, then the radius here has to be one. Now let's find the ratio between the black radius to that of the blue, and this will be equal to then. The 5, the radius of the black, divided by the radius of the blue, which is 1, and 5 over 1 is equal to 5. Oh, what? They are indeed the same. And that will always work out to be the case. Okay? So, actually, instead of saying find the ratio of the diameter, we can simply, we don't have to do that in any substitutions. We don't got to plug in, like, down here, we don't have to plug in diameter now. Because we know, logically... That the and we've just proved it via example that the ratio of the uh, radius of the aluminum to copper is going to be the same as the ratio of the diameter of the aluminum to the copper. So just solve this now for black R over blue R. Okay, so watch what we're going to do. I'm going to copy this. Okay, paste. Just do some cross multiplications. We need the black over the blue. So we got to get this black one on up. Right, we cross multiply it. All these are multiplied, so that's why I can just move these guys 
uh, diagonally. Then I'm going to move this blue one on down. I'm going to move the pi on over as well, because what I'm trying to do, remember, is I'm trying to isolate. I'm trying to isolate the black R over the blue R, which, wait a minute, I have that basically, right, don't I? I have the black over the blue, but they're squared, right? So what would you have to do to get rid of the square? Well, you'd have to square root it. But if you do that to the right-hand side, you got to do that to the left. So guess what? That's, that's it. This is your formula now, square root of pi. Now, it doesn't matter if it's black pi or blue pi. They're both pi, okay? So they're both going to be the same value. So I'm going to just write that in, uh, I'll actually write it in red, right? Show that it's totally independent. So red pi divided by, uh, excuse me, multiplied then by the black the black resistivity, which is the resistivity of the aluminum, all then divided by red pi, multiplied then by the blue resistivity or the resistivity of the copper. And this will be equal to then the radius of the black divided by the radius of the blue, or the ratio between the aluminum radius to the copper radius, which is the same thing as, and we just proved it via example, diameter of the black which is the aluminum to the uh, radius and excuse me to the diameter of the copper okay so all this is actually it right i mean it's kind of elegant in a strange way that this problem just literally all we need to do is basically take the ratios here and what do you notice about even the pies right i should have simplified it actually even a little more what do you notice about the pie the pies would have canceled man right see you later pie so what that means now is simply this, watch. Let me just delete that. I'm gonna put in my division sign here, okay? And and this is it. It's just the ratio, it's just the square root of the ratios between the resistivities at this particular temperature. Interesting. So now, all we gotta do is plug it on in, okay? All we have to do is plug it on in. So, I'm going to do that since I don't have a lot of room, and I really don't actually, I'll erase some of the stuff at the top. All right, we'll plug it in at the top. So now, it's going to be the square root of the resistivity of the aluminum, which is going to be 2.65 multiplied then by 10 to the minus 8, all divided by then the uh, resistivity of the copper, which is going to be 1.72 times 10 to the minus 8. And again, that will equal the ratio of those diameters. And let's see what we get. And I don't know why I plugged in an R there. Not, not even sure. Not even sure. All right, so let's do it. Ready? Square root of 2.65 times 10 to the minus 8. Notice the minus 8 basically canceled too. I mean, you could really simplify this, right? It's basically 2.65 divided by 1.72. All right, but I'm going to write in times 10 to the minus 8 anyway because I started it that way. So what do we get? We simply get now this fraction. Well, it's actually a whole, it's, it's, an, it's not a whole number. It's not a fraction in the calculator, it's 1.24. And that's going to equal then the black diameter in relationship or to the blue. But you know that I can always put this thing over 1. So if I divide that by, let's say, 1, here is my answer now. Okay, this is indeed now the answer. In other words... The diameter of the aluminum, in order for these two wires to have the same resistance per unit length, okay, the diameter then of the aluminum wire must be 1.24 times larger than the diameter of the copper wire. That's all it's saying. That's it, okay? Why is that the case? Well, that's the case because the resistivity of the aluminum wire is greater than that of the copper wire. And therefore we have to make the aluminum wire bigger. Not in terms of length, but wider basically, right? Thicker. And that provides for less resistance because this is in, this this has a higher resistivity and therefore would have a higher resistance if everything were constant. So in order to counteract that or balance that on out, we would have to then increase the diameter here because why the diameter? Uh, well, we cannot increase the length because it basically will have the same ratio of the unit lengths, okay? So, sure, yeah, all right, that's enough of this one, right? Oh, my goodness. So, guys, thanks for coming along on this journey with me. appreciate it very much. I look forward to helping you with more problems in the future. And if you can, 
subscribe, hit that like button, and tell your classmates. It really means the world to us. Thank you.